today I wanted to, um, we're going to discover a creature that we often associate with fall because some of them are more noticeable and more active at this time of year. And this is an animal that is greatly misunderstood, even feared or hated by people, even though they play such an important role in the world and in our lives. Um, they are very abundant predators of insects and pests. So they help to keep our plants healthy. They are also really important sources of food for other animals, like some of these migratory birds, as well as reptiles and amphibians. So any ideas of what I'm talking about? Do the drum roll. We have mice and slugs as guesses so far. How about some spiders? <laughs> so don't be alarmed. Like most, the vast majority of spiders, this one is completely harmless. So spiders, um, are not insects. They're really misunderstood animals. They're a group of animals called arachnids. I'm gonna move back a little so you can see a little better. So they have, unlike insects, they have two main body parts, four pairs of legs. Um, they're predatory, so they do have fangs. And they have these other appendages called pedipalps, which are used in feeding and in mating and as sensory organs. They usually have eight pairs of eyes, sorry, eight eyes, not eight pairs of eyes, eight eyes that are configured in different ways that can help you to identify them. Um, and so maybe because they're so different, people have some, you know, they're, they're, the unknown is, it can sometimes be something that people don't like. So I'm hoping to change your mind a little bit about, about spiders today. So spiders, um, why should we care about them? Well, they're a really important part of the food chain, as I mentioned. They're very diverse. So there's um, nine, uh, close to 900 species just in British Columbia and counting. And so they're an important part of our biodiversity. And they um, also are just incredible for their ability to make one of the strongest natural substances known, twice as strong as steel, and that is Silk. Silk is a really unique substance. This is not real silk, but it's flexible. It's super strong. Um, all spiders make silk. They have glands at the bottom of their abdomen called, and, called spinnerets, but only about half of the spider species actually make um, webs. So they have up to seven different types of silk that they use for other purposes. And um, that silk is also really important for other animals. So if this doesn't turn you on to spiders, then I don't know what will. So here we've got the most amazing structure. Can you see that okay? It's a hummingbird nest and um, it's so tiny and perfect and it's held together by spider web silk. So, and that's how it would be held onto a, um, a branch of a tree as well. Yeah. So. Uh, could you hold that up one sure. more time and just hold it still right in front yeah. of you? Yeah, that's perfect. Just right there for a second. It just is so There delicate. we go. Yeah. And yeah. you can actually see one of the strands right yeah. here. Thank you so much. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so spider web silk is, um, is, is really incredible. And um, let's see. So, what are some ways that we can learn about spiders? This time of year is a great time to go on um, to try to identify some of them. So we have these great um, guides and these are some of our door prizes. So this is hives, webs and slime. So this is, so has some spiders and spider webs as well as some other invertebrates and the signs that they leave behind. This is hot off the press. This is thanks to Juniper English, who's here with us. She's making a lot of these amazing resources. So you can actually identify spiders um, by understanding the types of webs that they build. So, um, and then for younger students, we have these as well. You can do um, some, learn about the types of webs that different spiders build and weave them yourself with your students. So what my favorite thing to do though, is to actually go on a spider web hunt. So I'm gonna take you around in my yard. If you go outdoors when it's not raining, 
bring a spray bottle of water and then you can be like the morning dew and spray the webs. It makes them really sh um, come alive and you can see the structure and all the beautiful, the beauty of them. So let's see if we can find any spider webs. So I'm going to move very slowly and I'm going to turn us around and we're going to look for the different types of spider webs that might be found. <gasps> And here's our first one. Oh my goodness, what do you know? It's an orb web made by an orb weaving spider. So these are the most familiar kinds of spider webs, but not the only kind. So typically the spider hangs out in the middle of the web with its legs stretched out on each of the different spokes of the orb, feeling for vibrations. So if an insect were to fly into the web and shake it, I had a little insect on here, earlier made out of pipe cleaners and it must have flown away. <laughs> but then the spider can tell it doesn't have very good vision, these types of spiders, but they sense where, where it is and they can tell how big it is and if it's uh, you know a stick or something else or if it's some prey that they want to wrap in silk and save for later or eat right away. And the spider doesn't get caught in its own silk because um, Parts of it are not sticky. So typically the center and the spokes are not sticky. And they also have special kind of structures on their legs that prevent them from getting stuck in the web. Okay, so that is not the only type of web though. We also have, let's see if we can find another kind. I was gonna show you real spider webs, but they were hard to see. But I have to say that I highly recommend building spider webs because <laughs> I learned so much about them. So here we go. This is a different kind of web called a sheet web. Sheet, like a sheet you put on your bed. Um, and sheet webs can be like a hammock um, in, like I've seen them in Douglas, really old Douglas fir trees in the thick bark. Um, or it can be, have a bowl or a dome on top. This one is made by a bowl and doily spider. So the spider hangs out by the platform underneath the, the bowl upside down. And when um, an insect comes and it uh, lands on the edges, it gets flung inside to the middle of the bowl. And then the spider is able to pull it out and eat it that way. Let's see what else we might have here. Here is another kind of web. This is called a funnel web. So funnel webs um, are often on the ground. They might be found um, in the corners of your house sometimes, made by giant house spiders. I'm gonna hold it up a little bit. So these are not sticky. They're made with silk that is not sticky and it has a hole in the middle here. And um, the spider hangs out at the bottom of the funnel and something that's crawling by, this ends up being like a trampoline. And, and so it struggles and then the spider is able to come up, grab its prey, those insect pests that you don't want into your house, like different uh, ants or mosquitoes or whatever it might be. And then it eats it and it's sheltered down at the bottom of the funnel where it's protected. Okay, now the fourth, that's three, the fourth type of web. Here we go. I hope you can see that okay. This is, I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit. This kind of web, um, sorry, I can't, well, it's not letting me zoom anymore. Okay, well, this is a cobweb or a tangle web. Um, it's kind of like my teenager's room. It's really messy, and um, but it actually has a brilliant structure and function. So it looks just like a lazy spider mess, but it actually has these trip lines that hang down, each with sticky substance at the very bottom. So when an insect is walking around, um, it might get stuck, and then these act like a broken rubber band, catapulting it up into the middle of the web of the cob where the spider um, can then have its meal. So we can learn so much about spiders, the different types of spiders, just up by their webs. But remember that only about half of the species of spiders actually lay uh, weave webs. So this is representing 
one of my favorite kinds of spiders, which is a jumping spider. They have incredible vision, one of the best visions of, of any invertebrate, and they can jump 40 times their body length. So for me, that would be like jumping 200 feet. So they can grab their prey um, and hunt it down. Whereas other spiders are just sit and wait predators. So this is my um, representation of a crab spider hiding in the flower, perfectly camouflaged until a flower visitor comes and then it can, it can um, get that. So spiders are really fascinating. 